Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Chai Chi Tai Chi web show. I'm Dane Dormio. And I'm here with my good buddy, Andrew Brown. And we have the pleasure and the honor this evening of sharing with you this conversation with David Chandler, who has been studying Tai Chi since 1975. And he's been the student of many famous Tai Chi masters. I know longer than Andrew and I have been born, of course, <laughs> including Yang Jun Ming, William C. C. Chen, and Sun Yong Chan. His background also spans a professional career as a hypnotist, professional actor, and stage fight choreographer. He uses his superpowers for good by helping his students overcome their physical, emotional, and spiritual limitations. So David, Thank you for being here. I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, hearing more about your background and some of the lessons you've learned over the years. Certainly. Well, thank you, first of all, and welcome to your audience. Uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, uh, our time together this evening. So <clears throat> I'd like to I'd like to hear first of all your origin story. What got you started? on this path of internal martial arts? Well, I was, a, uh, I was a, an athlete when I was young, a uh, football player, uh, I ran track and high jumped. And uh, um, what happened for me was I was training, uh, I was on football scholarship and I was training in the off season and uh, a fellow, uh, who I was a freshman in high school when this happened. And what happened was my, uh, I was at this uh, little college and, and uh, the, I was brand new to this college, didn't know anybody much and was uh, working with this, um, this fellow, we were playing basketball two on two. And this fellow who was the quarterback, who was the senior, he, what he did was he, he got very angry because I was very capable of stealing the ball from him. And so he didn't like that and eventually got so angry, he threw the ball as hard as he could, quarterback, and, you know, a good arm on him. When I was running back after I just uh, handed the ball off and my partner scored, and he threw the ball, hit my back, and that created an opportunity for my back to go out in the next couple of days when I was weightlifting. And so it ruptured two discs in the back, and I was – was in an extreme pain. Tai Chi. When I discovered Tai Chi, I used it to uh, to heal my body, and so that was the beginning mm -hmm. stages for me. When I realized that I saw a demonstration of Tai Chi in a movement class for uh, actors, and decided that was that was the thing for me. So I went to class, and I found that it was when I saw the demonstration, it was moving, the fellow was moving uh, much like the way I was moving to, to, to get my body to feel comfortable in an upright standing position. So uh, I started studying Tai Chi with this fellow, Bill Parkinson, and he's been, he was teaching at the University of Utah for many, many years. And that started me on the path. I it was a professional, I was an actor, so I, when I became a professional, Right out of college, I went to New York, and when I was in New York, I connected with, uh, as you said, Grandmaster William C. C. Chen and a number of other Tai Chi teachers in the city. Uh, eventually, connecting with Master Joe Tsang Hua, and, uh, uh, and and studying with him, and uh, and that continued for many years uh, in, in different kind of more workshop situations. So that was that was the beginning for me. And that was. Uh, well, well over 45 years ago. Uh, so my initial studies in Tai Chi began when I was like 18, 19. And, and it so really I had to do, and, and it really had to do uh, a lot with, uh, with, with overcoming your own injury and, and rehabilitating your own body, it sounds like. Yes. And being, being that I, that I was physically very, assertive, shall we say, with my athleticism, I, I found that Tai Chi was a great mix for me. It was great for me to, to participate in it because it, uh, it, it, it changed me, my sensitivity, my awareness. Mm. So many mm. things uh, really 
altered for me as because uh, I've been meditating. I I already studied the I Ching a little bit uh, in my first very first classes in college, and I was uh, it, it opened my mind to such great possibilities. And then Tai Chi just fit with that perfectly. Mm. So you had mentioned that uh, you you learned uh, some Tai Chi in in a Tai Chi for Actors class, and I'm curious about the crossover between Tai Chi and the Alexander technique, uh, for example, and and what um, what what Tai Chi would has to offer for for performers or say for someone who wants to increase their charisma, their stage presence. Is there is there some some crossover there? Because a lot of uh, I, I remember learning about the Alexander technique in college and and being very fascinated by it. And it seems like there's um, there, there's quite a bit of crossover with the the biomechanical principles of Tai Chi. Oh, absolutely. One of the things that I mean, I, fortunate for me, I, I studied Alexander technique in in college. Um, for my voice classes, um, it was part of my training there. And then when I got to New York, I continued my study there. In fact, I, I ended up training uh, private lessons in Tai Chi uh, for, um, for Alexander Technique. And so I would every, every week go have two or three sessions of, of Alexander technique uh, a, a week. We did a regular trade, and the woman who was the Alexander technician was was um, um, was a woman who was working at Juilliard. She taught the the Alexander uh, technique at, at Juilliard. So I was like, "This is great. This is really wonderful." Yeah. So, uh, so for me. The technique has always been the technique of uh, and what what Alexander technique for those who don't haven't had exposure to that, it's it's a real altering of the body alignment so that you get back to proper alignment and it's through a series of consciousness awareness in your body exercises. It was developed by an actor who had lost his voice, and uh, he did all this retraining of his body to because he, he started looking what's what he looked in a mirror what what is what is causing this so his problem became uh the creation of a brand new dynamic thing and i find that that was pretty much the case for me in tai chi as well because for me the tai chi was so similar in the alignment uh aspect of and energetic and consciousness awareness and it was a great fit for me, and uh, and I think that that teacher felt the same. Hmm. And so the other thing, I mean, I, I taught for thirty years, uh, taught Tai Chi for actors at the the National Theater Institute at the Eugene O'Neill uh, uh, Theater Memorial Theater Center, um, uh, which is in Waterford, New London area, in Connecticut. And uh, Tai Chi. I also taught stage combat there. So I would teach people to flow in the Tai Chi forms and give them structures and postures that would help increase their energy, but also give them greater command over their physical being. And in doing so, that aided in creating the flow state that I really needed for my work with them, with the actors when we were doing work on fight choreography. Uh, because ultimately the martial arts aspect of tai chi is to be in a sense as calm and collected and gentle with never harming anybody uh, unless you need to and 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 doing so with great softness that that really flowed nicely into the work with folks on fight choreography because there you want to look like you're doing the big damage but you want to do it with such control that you create tremendous safety so it was a great mm -hmm. combination, in essence, for me to be teaching that in that way. Awesome. <laughs> so do you feel like uh, people who, I mean, Tai Chi is, is uh, the, uh, most commonly marketed for health, wellness, longevity, stress reduction, these kinds of things. But um, 
but do you think there's there's uh, a lot of potential also for for benefit for somebody who uh who who wants to work in in theater or acting or music or that sort of thing oh absolutely the the, the effects of tai chi long term on the brain are uh documented in, in numerous studies and it changes your brain it literally changes brain structure uh over time and that structure allows for much much higher levels of creativity um much more flow in, in uh, of thinking flow of action physically so um what i find for, and i'll give you an example one of my students was a uh was a, a professor in and he uh, would take time every summer to go he was as an artist he would go paint so he would teach during the rest of the year then during the summers he would take off and go paint and he worked a lot in watercolor. And so he was used to doing like one or two paintings a day during the summer. Well, what apparently happened was after he studied Tai Chi, he started to apply the Tai Chi principles and he would take an eight hour day to paint. Well, he started to do Tai Chi for an hour of that eight hours. So now he's only got seven hours to paint. But what he found was he improved the flow and skill and uh, and dynamism of his work to such a degree that he ended up producing four to eight paintings a day. So he went from one to two. So he doubled or quadrupled his output. And he said they were of a finer and higher level than they were before he started doing Tai Chi. So as an artist, that's an example of of, of, of an artist who now has greater flow uh, with their brush. Mm. Um, the sense of structure for, for an artist, like a, a theater artist, an actor, uh, find that their, their, uh, their voice will change. It will, it will uh, deepen and become much more profoundly uh, effective uh, as a, an instrument of reach, for example, because you mm. have so much more power down mm. in your dantian. Which is really, as actors, actors always want to find cool. a deepening of their center. They want to mm -hmm. get you want to get down to your gut, and your gut feeling is really what you're looking for, and and following your impulse. So there's so many things in acting that are very similar to what we're looking for in in uh, our awareness in Tai Chi. I love that example of of uh, the the painter because it's in. Uh, in uh in a certain classical tai chi or classical chinese sense the the arts of uh of of sword fighting and painting calligraphy um were you know so among the gentlemen's arts that that would sort of sort of um go together the classical arts i think including uh calligraphy sword fighting and poetry and and a few other things like this that that all were considered to go together naturally calligraphy. so Calligraphy, calligraphy was actually thought of as uh, one of the high-level martial arts. That's that's an interesting point. That it was calligraphy itself was thought of as as a martial art itself. Hmm. So you also uh, uh, apply those principles. I I, I studied with uh, Tim Leung Al Huang, uh, for example, and. He is a master calligrapher, and one of the things that we would do, uh, we were it's like this one particular lengthy workshop that we did, which was a seminar for about, uh, I guess, over a month, I think, and it was a retreat that we just, uh, we did morning Tai Chi, we worked out on principles, fundamentals, all that kind of stuff, lots of Qigong, and then uh, in the afternoon, because it was out in the desert in, in Taos, New Mexico, in, in near Santa Fe. And so we we actually would do major workout in the morning. And then when it got hot, we would go in and do calligraphy. It was mm. always working the calligraphy as Tai Chi. And that was that was a great get for me. Mm, mm. Yeah. How slow can you paint uh, the character without dropping any extra paint, without <laughs> spilling or making a mistake? I can see the concentration in the, the, that calligraphy cast. You also mentioned the the change to brain structures, and this 
uh, this brings up another question I want to ask about the the parallel and the crossover between Tai Chi and hypnosis, since I know this is also part of your background. And um, and and to me, uh, it, it became apparent early on that there's there's a, a really huge crossover. I mean, you can think of uh, Tai Chi or Qigong, uh, certain types of practices as being like a form of, of self-induced hypnosis. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, like accessing the, the, the deep structure of the brain um, through theta states and, uh, and increasing neuroplasticity. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your perspective on what the, the crossover between Tai Chi and, and hypnosis is. Well, I, there, in essence, if you think in terms of Taoism uh, as being a, a rather shamanic uh, 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 tradition, if you will, uh, or religion, if you want to put it in those terms, but uh, that where Tai Chi springs from is a very shamanic place uh, in, in learning. And so it, the sense of what's happening when you do Tai Chi is it is entering a trance state, if you will, or a, a liminal like, state, right? It's almost you're dealing like with liminal states. Yeah, you're it's you're almost you're almost go, taking yourself out of trance. It's almost like oh no, let's get real now. You become more more grounded, more connected, and when you get more connected, and you start to view the world more, and you are more attentive to what's happening both inside your body and inside the, the flow of what's happening and outside your body, it, it is a basic technique of, of, uh, of hypnosis to first, before they take you into trance, before we, because I'm, I'm a certified instructor of hypnosis, taking you in slowly by relaxing you first. You don't have to be relaxed and hypnotized. It just makes it easier. Likewise, in when you're doing Tai Chi, one of the first things we're looking to, in fact, the first 10 items on the list from one of my Tai Chi teachers was first, number one, relax. Number two, relax. Number three, four, five, relax, relax, relax. So everything about Tai Chi in the beginning is relax. And that's what we do to start our process in, in working in hypnosis. So mm -hmm. it is an entrance into a, an altered state and hypnosis uh, has been considered to be that as well as Tai Chi, certainly. So, um, so hypnosis puts you into a place where your body is very relaxed. You experience things very differently and you're activating your subconscious mind, which is your higher self. It's the part of you that has always done the healing. Um, it's the part of you that has always been there. Long before your conscious mind developed, your, your subconscious was there protecting you, helping you. Uh, healing you, uh, like you get a cut, your conscious mind says, "Oh yeah, I've got to put, I got to put, uh, I got to wash it, I got to put a bandage on it." And then, so during that time, your conscious mind is very active. But then you forget about it until you have to change the battery, ba ba change the uh, the bandage again. So what happens is the subconscious mind is healing the body the entire time between the time when you're doing the bandages, for example, and beyond. So it's, hap it's going on in an ongoing fashion uh, all the time. So the subconscious mind is really what we're tapping into in a profound way when we're doing our Tai Chi practice. Mm, we're connecting with our higher nice. self. <clears throat> so you've been practicing for 45 years now? That sounds about right. And... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was reading on your bio that you you were into competition and soon style Tai Chi. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Finish your question. Oh, okay. I was just wanting to ask. Um, so it's because you've done probably if you did the combined forms, then you understand you had to taste for all the all the styles of Tai Chi. What kind of styles of Tai Chi do you uh, like to start people with? Like the first time they ever take a class, what kind of Tai Chi do you teach? Right. So uh, 
because of the way my training developed, what I usually start people off with in class, the very first thing I do is I start teaching uh, a set of warm-ups. Now, we call them warm-ups, but a friend of mine, a colleague of mine uh, at, at Master Joe Memorial a few years back came to my workshop. He's a colleague and, and uh, uh, he's a wonderful artist himself. And he, he said this beautiful thing to me. He, he was watching... He was watching me teach and you know and i'm talking about these warm-ups and so forth and at the end of it he said why on earth do you call them warm-ups he goes you packed so much tai chi and qi kong knowledge you know those warm-ups i was i was amazed he said you you just do so much inside of those warm-ups and you call them warm-ups but it's really all qi kong and i said it's a trick People think it's easier. Think it's e warm ups are easier than qigong, even though all of the warm ups are qigong. Mm, mm. And so, I usually start people with warm ups, which have a, a number of things: swinging arms. Uh, you know, you'd recognize a lot of it. It's the the kind of things where we do we 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 take things along a certain line from literally head to toe. You end up going through your entire body. Uh, we do exercises that you know uh, inside the warm ups. We do. Indonesian hand dances, which help to balance and, and stimulate the two hemispheres of the brain uh, and help develop coordination. Uh, we do uh, Songku practice, the padding out, the tapping practices. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, do, um, uh, we do swinging arms and swinging legs. We do a series of different postures like white crane and the wave and uh, um, it, it, the primary function of those warm-ups is to get ready, everybody ready. And then once mm -hmm. they're already in state, then you set them up to learn postures that lead to form. So I then would, I might teach like a four directions set, which is basically eight primary moves of the forms. It's um, it starts with a wave. It does shoulder strike, ward off, roll back, press, pull back, push, pluck. And then it goes on to another direction with another foot forward. It's basically done in a bow stance. And so inside of that short form, I teach uh, the practice of, you know, what, what are the stances, primary stances? We start with the Wu Chi, Wu, Wu, Wu Chi stance, uh, where we're just doing nothing. Wu Chi is really one of the most important and funda mm -hmm. fundamental um, trainings in, in Tai Chi, is learning to go into Wu Chi. Wu Chi meaning the void being mm -hmm. nothing happening. So before you start, you do a meditation that sets you up. So we invariably in, in our classes, we always start with the Wu Chi uh, practice before, in between warm ups. Then we do Wu Chi and then we do like standing meditation. And then we do, we go into our, our practice of whatever forms. And usually mm -hmm. the short forms uh, are designed to teach people basic stances like the 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 wuchi stance the 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 horse stance parallel structure the the bow stance or forward stance as it's sometimes called um and then the turning motions and then the basic posture so we talk about alignment we talk about what's how things are manifesting and so then we go through the other series of what is each posture and how does it flow into the next and with that short form as an example, I, I then take them on to something else, the longer form. Now, I also, mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, I would, after the warm ups, I would teach the chant to chant, which I learned primarily in the, in the beginning from, from uh, Master Zhou Tanghua. And uh, in fact, he gave me, a, uh, gave me an opportunity on my very first meeting of him. Uh, he, he asked me the question, what do you want, what do you want to learn? Uh, breathing or Chen Su Chen? And I said, Chen Su Chen, because I'd been reading about it. I was like, oh, this is great. And he goes, oh, too bad. Chen Su Chen, it's too bad. Breathing more important. You, you know, and so it was like, I, I had a feeling that if I'd said breathing, he might have said, oh, that's too bad. Chen Su Chen more important. I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, but the Chen Su Chen is something that I then both went on to study and research uh, all sorts of reeling silk exercises, literally going through the entire body from head to toe again, uh, using a basic spiraling energy, winding the energy around the body. And so 
I and so I usually start teaching that and then and then take them into the walking version and various walking versions of the Chan Su Chan exercises that we've developed and and culled together. And then well, I before the, oh sorry yeah, go ahead. So before we move on, I wanted to ask real quick: Could you share the breathing technique that Master Joe shared with you? Well, a reverse abdominal breathing would be uh, okay. of vital importance. And what's interesting to me is different teachers. I, I've had some, as as you mentioned, I've had really some of the some of the great teachers on the planet. Uh, 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 Master Joe being certainly one of the most important. Uh, and for example. Uh, Sun Yong Chen, I, I remember Grandmaster Sun said, who's the head of the Sun Style, said, because uh, uh, well, I asked him the question, what about breathing? He said, breathe naturally. And I went, mm. oh, okay. Uh, what does that mean? And he goes, well, he expounded. He said, you know, if you're running, you breathe like you're running. If you're meditating, you breathe like you're meditating. <laughs> so if mm. you're, you, know, you follow what is na natural in your body, so that it's it's just it's just what's happening because your body is doing what it's doing, mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. but you have to get back to that. There's training in essence because we're not very natural. We're all so conditioned. So you have to uncondition yourself, if you will, or transform your conditioning. Yeah, the two second cycle is uh, too slow for natural breathing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so. When we talk about breathing, I talk about a number of different people. For example, uh, uh, Bob Klein and I often have exactly opposing ideas about breath because I follow what Master Joe said, but he also said Master Joe said it both ways too. But uh, and I and I mentioned that breathing in or breathing out, depending. So I I follow the idea that as you are expanding, as your postures are going outward from the body to exhale and as the postures are bringing something in you inhale and in that regard uh and claws exactly the opposite we all, always play with each other around that because both are correct if they're exact whatever is the exact opposite will all obviously be functional as well of, of any pretty much anything uh just all right it's totally different so uh so the breathing practice that I do is generally, or a general rule that I talk about is as you, like if you're doing work, and this mm. is what Master Joe would say, if you're doing work, if you're gonna do something very physical, when you want to like push a car, what do you do? You don't go up and go inhale as you push it away, you take a deep breath, and then as you exert, you begin to exhale and you mm -hmm. expand outward, for example, in the push. So exhaling on the push when you actually have physical object in front of you, uh, as opposed to, doing the solo form where you you know you you're just moving through the air although you want to move through the air with great consciousness and awareness uh giving texture and density to the air around you and that gives you a different breathing practice a different physical conscious awareness in your body as a result um but a, a basic breathing exercise um that that, Grant, that that master joe would use would be mm. to pull your belly in for example and you can all try this right now pull your belly in and then inhale against that and fill your lower body as much as you can even though you've pulled in then once you're full of breath send your belly out and then exhale then at the end of the exhalation, your belly's out, you still have a little breath in you. So as you pull the belly in, which is the hang, then you inhale again from there. So the hang ha breath, there are a couple of different ways to think about this. There's the belly out, exhale, ha. Then pull the belly in, which is the hang. The beginning of the hang is hang you literally say hang as you pull your belly in and that's expelling the rest of the breath from the body and then you inhale against that pulled in position so this oh, is my. the prenatal breath of, of the, the uh, uh, of, of ancient times and it is like doing sit-ups in a stand-up position 
Yep, you gotta work our core. That's the most important thing for a Tai Chi man, in my opinion. <laughs> Strong belly. <laughs> yes. Okay, so well, you've been doing. The idea, yeah. The, idea, oh. the Buddhists, the Buddhists yeah. talk about soft belly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what we really kind of want the idea of is flexible belly. So you want to be as you want to get the belly out as far as it can go, and the belly in as far as it can go. And as you do that and you work the breath, you are active, you're doing all sorts of things internally to the internal organs, giving a massage to the internal organs. It's allowing greater elasticity. It's getting rid of uh, belly fat. It's doing all sorts of internal things that are great for us. Yeah. Yeah, I think a really valuable form of exercise is what I, I call breath stretching, or just like you would work the range of motion. Of, of other parts of your body, of the spine or the legs or whatever, you know, you'd, you'd stretch to open the muscles. You can also stretch to expand the, the range of motion of your breath. So just stretching the capacity of your lungs to take in air, to squeeze out air is, is an important, uh, important form of exercise to go along with everything else. Mm -hmm. Working the lungs just like another muscle. Yeah. What, one of the things that uh, we, we always have to remember is that even though we are taught over and over again, relax, 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 uh, and get soft, get soft, get soft uh, in Tai Chi, because uh, softness overcomes hardness. Um, one of the ideas in, in, in is that the, the yin and yang are the extremes. Yin and yang are the extremes. And yin and yang is just not the same Tai Chi. So Tai Chi means those, those complete and polar opposite qualities. But if you are completely polar opposite, it's one thing. For example, height as a dimension has an up and a down. Well, I often talk about the extremes. Well, you go far, far out. You can keep going far, far out. You can go far, far in. You can keep going far, far in. It's the extremes. Get to those extremes. But where does... Where does up begin? Like everybody take a moment. Everybody point up, right? Point up, all right? Now, point down. Now, height is a oneness. So where does up begin and down leave off? Is it at your eyes? Is it at your feet? Is it at your center? You know, above your head? Oh, that's up. But, you know, you're... Uh, p lifting something from the ground, you lift it up, right? So what is up? What is down? It's a continuum. So ultimately, when we start thinking of yin and yang, they're mutually arising inseparability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two sides of the same coin. Exactly. Can't have like one without, without the two. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So um, <clears throat> since, since you've been practicing for so long, I wanted to ask, um, what is your practice like, your personal practice that you do without your students that, you know, just your own time that you want to focus on? What would, what's your normal uh, hour or two hours or well, eight hours? <laughs> I, someone once said to me, you know, it's like, uh, how long do you practice? And I say, well, all the time. Yeah. All mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. You know, the practice is, is something that you make part of your daily routine to the place where ultimately everything becomes Tai Chi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but one of the things that, that I do is I, I, as I'm studying, I, I focus my attention on what I'm going to teach. So I will focus in on, uh, sometimes I'll just do a, an exploration, but I'm, I, you know, it's like I have my regular practice of, of warm ups and Chan Su Chen uh, and flow throughs and four directions and five elements and, and sun style and you know i do all of these things in variation at different times during the day and depending on where what i'm teaching um but one of the things that uh that that i like to do is to then experiment with the forms and play with the postures or play with an exercise through consciousness so I will, for example, earlier today, I was doing a very, very simple exercise of raising my hands up and forming a ball, 
right? And you can do this at home. So you start by forming the ball with your hands, right? Now, immediately, most people will suddenly have a sensation of something there, a, a magnetic feeling of something pushing your hands apart or pulling them together. It's either push apart, pull together, and usually both. And so now focus your fingers so that the fingertips point to each other. Start at your pinkies. Point your pinkies to each other. Then ring fingers point to each other. And then middle finger point to each other. And then index finger point to each other. And thumbs point to each other. Now, notice how far apart your fingers are. And just play with a very minute adjustment of like a quarter of an inch movement between your hands. Now, let your belly relax. Lengthen your spine. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and back lightly. Begin to extend your arms. And notice there has been an adjustment. As you extend your arms, your fingers are becoming more parallel to the ground. Now relax your shoulders. Now let your elbows bend and bring the ball back in close to you. And simply allow it to expand so that you're holding a ball where you're feeling a course of energy in a circular fashion to the other fingers. And so now your focus is more on the palms of your hands. And if you were standing, I would say focus your attention on the balls of your feet. Now, stretch your fingers up and away from each other. Bring your palms down. I'm going to be focused totally on hands now. So, be, so bring your hands down and thumbs point to the grief points. Okay, lung points here in the meridian system. Drop your elbows down. Lift your fingertips up. So the Pinkies and thumbs are equal distance. So pinkies are equal to the distance between your thumbs. Now, begin to expand that out to the width of your shoulders, keeping the pinkies and thumbs in alignment with each other as best as possible so they're not going palms out or lifting the heel of the palms up. So you expand out, still pointing up, and then come back in. Now, this is very sun style fingers together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so open the chest close the chest now extend your arms with your fingers pointing up for as long as you can shoulders and elbows down extend don't get to a place where your elbows are locked but extend Stand out. Notice your fingertips want to move away from the ceiling, but then relax them and slowly let your fingers come down to a neutral position and notice the sensation. Oh, yeah, definitely in the wrists. You feel a release. Then pull your fingertips back so your palms are exposed more to the front. And as you bring your hands back in, point your fingertips up, and you'll notice your fingers will want to move towards each other. Really keep your shoulders down. And you repeat that, that's a great exercise. And that's a very simple thing, but things like that, where I will, I will begin to take time to really dynamically study and mm. examine a particular piece of Qigong or a particular posture. And, and uh, when, I'm, when I'm, I do that when I'm on my, on my own, you know, I play. I play. That's what you do for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, um, what's the best way for people who want to connect to you, learn more from you? What's the best way for them to 
reach out? Well, I would say go to uh, eaglesquesttaichi.com. So it's eaglesquesttaichi.com. And there you can you you can take a look there are, you can look up uh, connections to watch YouTube's on on uh, uh, you know videos on YouTube. Uh, it'll give you a way to connect to you know if you want to buy uh, videos on uh, for for learning uh, instructional videos on uh, Vimeo or contact us and and we'll you know you can buy DVDs that way. Um, but also, I do live streaming. Right now, I'm doing about three classes a week, uh, Monday night, uh, 6.30 to 8, uh, uh, a Zoom class then uh, on Tai Chi. And I do a Qigong class on Wednesday and Saturday at 10 in the morning. And you can find that link on our Eagles Quest uh, uh, website, eaglesquesttaichi.com website. It has how to get into that, that Zoom class. Uh, and I'm going to be doing another, I'm uh, probably going to start soon, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, because we want to announce it before I just start doing it, but because uh, we like people in the class. Uh, we're going to do an, an added class on Thursday in the evening. We'll have two evening classes. This is a lot right. lighter class schedule than I'm used to. I, I got <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, sir. Uh, so... I was uh, I was doing some a lot of teaching actually right before COVID and it's all dried up and now we just have the Zoom classes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's been rough. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, your uh, your connection is a little bit choppy right now. But uh, for anybody who wasn't able to hear, it's Eagles Quest Tai Chi, and I'll make sure to um, put that link in the comments with this video, um, and that's where people can. Uh, can uh, uh, join your life classes, etc. Yes. Excellent. Now, before we, we let you go, I wanted to ask one more question about uh, the style you chose, because you are a soon stylist, it looks like, or that's like well, your, yes, I, your I, favorite. I, I teach, <laughs> I, I, you know, I have qualities of, of Chen style stuff that I do. I do, I mm -hmm. teach a combined style, a long, a long form that I created because I was I was not anticipating teaching this to anybody in the beginning, and I studied uh, with so many different teachers as an actor traveling around the country that mm -hmm. it was hard for me to be with any one teacher or any one style for a long time. So I would learn from somebody, and then I'd learn from somebody else, and and I kept saying, and everyone they were really good teachers, so they'd say everything's about the fundamentals of the principles, and that's what Master mm -hmm. Joe used to say all the time: principles is the key. And so I I basically created a, a long form that is a combined style that is very similar in many ways to the combined style that, that uh, was developed in China uh, a number mm. of years back in the 60s I think um, but and then and then I when I went to the international symposium years later uh, and met the grand masters of each of the styles it was you know I was very excited being you know someone who was uh, teaching a combined style that I, I, I effectively created. I was like, oh, and I performed it for Grand Masters. And uh, it was pretty interesting because I was, I was a little nervous. You know, I'm going out there, I, you know, I'm saying to them, hey, your style's not mine. No, <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, but I walked up and, you know, and I, I, it was kind of a brave thing. It's a combined style. It's my style. It's not somebody mm -hmm. else's. And, and uh, uh you know, there were about 35 of us out of 400 that were up doing this at a time. We would go up five people or six people at a time. And uh, and, and uh, the judges would be up there. The grandmasters were the judges. That's kind of intense at that time to, to do that. And uh, they would, you know, you come up, you do your bow, you do your thing for about five minutes, listen to music, and then they stop and then you wait and then uh, they signal to you and you bow and you leave, right? And then you get your papers. Well, everybody did pretty much mm -hmm. that each time. And what happened at the international, it was the international forum uh, on Tai Chi up in Thunder Bay, Canada. And uh, at the end of it, and I, I had been studying with each of the grand masters and just absorbing them. I'm like a sponge in that way. I was absorbing everything. And, and somehow, what was happening is all of the grand masters connected with me in a beautiful, wonderful way. They were very kind and very, very encouraging, certainly. And when, uh, when we did this, 
event, the 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 the, the adjudication process, when we when when I finished my round, I think we were about the fourth round to go in my group and. Uh, when they finish, when we finished and they do the little bell and, you know, everybody comes to a close, no matter where you are in your form, you stop. And mm -hmm. what happened was um, all of a sudden, all the grandmasters just burst into blah, 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 blah. You know, they were just, man, they were excited. They were chatting. They were talking. And we were like, what's going on? You know, we're still standing out there and, and they are, you know, really just, you know, and we're like, I haven't seen them like that. This is really what's happening. Yeah, I, I, I just smell of Chinese, but uh, you know, I, I could pick up some things I didn't quite know. So it was a little odd that one of the grandmasters in that school went ahead and called me over, which was very unusual to do. And he said, he said, come. And I, you know, I walked over and, and everybody's like, what's going on in the room? And he takes me by my hands and starts to give me feedback in front of the whole group which was very beautiful and i had a translator who came with me and and it was just one of the most sweet and lovely experiences and it was so gentle and kind and giving and you know and he gave a good correction as well well a couple the next day uh two days later i was going to leave because that's like on a wednesday and then i think saturday we left thunder bay so i was getting a ride from the fellow who was one of the organizers of uh, the Thunder Bay Forum. And uh, I said, that was really wild. Uh, what happened the other day during the adjudication process? And he looks at me and he goes, yeah, that was wild. All right. And they were talking about you. And I went, yeah, right. You know, and then he went, no, they were talking about you. That's why they got all excited. They really loved what you were doing. They respected it. They saw what, you, what was going on. And they were like, and out of that, Next, I think the last day of the workshops there, the seminars that I'd st spent time with Grandmaster Sun, he then invited me to come study with him in Beijing. But he told me this in Chinese, so I didn't hear it. You know, I didn't hear it until mm. the next day. My friend who had been uh, doing the, the, uh, the translation for me, we're on the plane, and, and he goes, oh, by the way, Grandmaster Sun invited you to come study with him in Beijing. And I was like, what? You know, like, what? Are you kidding? And he goes, I forgot. I got so excited. I forgot to tell you. Then I was like, holy cow, my friend. So now I got to get in touch with him. How do I do it? And I ended up getting a grant and going to study with him. And I expected to be like walk in the door and be with a group of like 100 people, you know. And I got there and go in he's arranged because he's like he's like head of the, the chinese version of uh General motors you know and uh he's like chairman of the board of that and so we go I, I i go into his office and he kind of tells me what we're going to do we go into this beautiful marble floored uh space on the property of of where he works and he would teach me privately with two training partners and my translator or a training partner and a translator uh, and he would come in and do training with me teach something go back to work i would train with my partner he'd come back in like half an hour later and, and you know train some more teach some more and then go off while i would train with uh with my training partner and all of that was I was expecting to be one of a hundred people and it was private lessons and that was very powerful. And that came from studying with each of the grand masters before that. But then that's when, when I really kind of spent time with Sun style, I went away from that. He told me, he said, you come back next year and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll induct you. So of course I went back and I went back the following year and, uh, uh, and that's when I won the first place prize in Beijing for uh, Sun Style. Uh, wow, that's cool wow, that's a cool story. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Yeah, so um, I uh, really appreciate you being here, David, and uh, sharing your knowledge and wisdom. And I appreciate the work that you're doing to 
help people overcome their health and other challenges through spreading these teachings. The I am glad to know that we're on the same team because the reason that we do this is because we want to live in a world where more people are practicing this stuff, where more people have their own personal daily mind, body, energetic hygiene practice. So um, I really appreciate you coming on and, and the work that you do. And I appreciate everybody who's uh, tuned in to watch tonight. Thanks a bunch for being here. Excellent. My pleasure. And thank you for asking. me. Yeah. Wonderful talking to you, David. Thanks so much. Indeed, my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks. Have a good night. Cheers. <laughs> <Bye. laughs>